Hello and welcome to Chendu.org. In this lesson, we got a tongue twister. Deduplicate, then concatenate. Maybe you should say that six times in a row. But uh, this is an interesting problem. One of the YouTube commenters asked me something similar and I thought uh, we all could use a lesson on the power of formulas versus power query uh, to do things like this. Imagine you got some invoices or purchase orders or wh whatever may be the case where uh, you have some item numbers or item codes, let's say A, B, B, C, D, E, E. And now as you could see, B has been repeated and E has been repeated. And we would like to generate a format like this. Invoice 01 has A, B, C, D, E with the comma separated list like this. So this is the output that we want from data like this. So what do we use? If you have access to Office 365 and the dynamic array functions, you could actually write a formula that would generate the output in this format. Uh, you could also use some sort of a longer formula in older versions of Excel as well, um, but uh, dynamic arrays makes that simple. Alternatively, you could use Power Query to generate uh, such an output. So I will show you both methods and uh, we will debate the merits of them in the Excel workbook. Uh, feel free to download a copy of this file, but this is fairly simple data. So, you know, you could also make up something like this in your uh, Excel file and uh, watch it. So we have some data like this and we want the format like this. For the formula approach, we'll just go sideways because this kind of aligns with how this is lined up. Um, but, you know, it's not very hard to transpose this uh, um, uh, as well. So let's say um, th this is my invoice one and I want to just concatenate everything but remove the duplicates first. So we can use the dynamic array function unique uh, to remove duplicates. So I, all I have to do is just select everything uh, and that will give me a smaller array with only one uh, item per occurrence. So G has been repeated, so only one G. And uh, we can then take this unique output and then pass it to text join um, with a comma as a delimiter. Uh, and then uh, we can say true for blank or empty values because you know we will just use the same size of reference. And when you use it in this, there are three blanks and they will be ignored by text join. And you will get uh, that kind of an output. So that's the formula that I've used here. Uh, the formula approach is clearly shorter and very, very simple. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot use this if you are using an older version of Excel or you're not yet on Office 365. So we just take text join, comma separated, uh, ignore any blank cells and then unique of that range and that will give me that. And uh, when you drag it sideways, uh, you will get uh, the items for other invoices. But how do we solve this if we don't have these unique function? Then you can use Power Query to solve the same problem. Uh, the very first requirement for using with Power Query is either you connect to this data uh, from an Excel file or some other source. Alternatively, if you just want to do it within the same file, uh, you would need to select the range and give it a name. You can also format it as a table, but given that there are some blank cells here and there, uh, it's not a good idea to have it as a table. So we will uh, use a range name called my data. And then you just select all of this. I've already built the Power Query in, in a separate uh, tab there, uh, but I'll show you from scratch. So we'll select everything. We go to data uh, and then uh, click on um, from table range option from get and transform data. So this will take data from an Excel table or a named range in your workbook and load it into Power Query uh, with this. Uh, and you will get everything that is there. Uh, Power Query is uh, prone to adding data type changes. Uh, this is actually something that I, I'm not a big fan, so I usually just uh, delete that uh, so that we have control. If you expand the queries, you can see that I have already built the query, which is uh, just uh, five, six steps. Now, uh, the formula approach is just a two formulas, text join and unique, but within Power Query, you have to actually do a little more to get it to that shape. So what we will do is we will just take this source and we will first turn it sideways so that invoice numbers go in one column and uh, items go in other columns. So we'll just say transform 
transpose the table. So this kind of flips the table sideways and you will get all the invoice numbers here. Now, next thing that I will do is I will just select column two uh, and then uh, column two and then I'll just uh, go all the way to column 11 um, and uh, right click and then just say merge columns um, and uh, comma separation. So this will give you a list like this. The thing with merged columns is it is actually a static step. So what it means is it is only merging column two to column 11 only as you could see in the formula m code here this means in in future if you have invoices with more than 10 items so then they will not be merged and they will remain as separate columns here so this is a step that you want to be mindful and you want to think about <coughs> what happens if there are more columns one approach is you can actually automate that entire step uh, through another formula that uh, dynamically generates the column names um, but uh, you know it gets a little too much uh, of m language coding alternatively you could pick a my data range that is sufficiently big enough to capture any future um, changes so once this is uh, there then all we have to do is we will mm, we will then split this again you might think you know what's the point of merging and splitting you know it gives you a different approach so we will right click we will just say split column by delimiter and uh, delimiter would be comma rather than splitting into several columns we will now split it into rows okay so this will basically take that data and flip it uh, sideways so you will get uh, by each invoice like this unfortunately the null values are now replaced by blanks i'm not really sure if this is an ongoing behavior with power query or it is one of the uh, things that they introduced in in a version change uh, that they keep doing every month um, so if you notice that there are no blanks then no, that's not a problem otherwise uh, you may have to remove the blanks so once that is done we we will get this as you could see power query insists on adding data type change steps every now and then i'll delete that step uh, and then what we want is we want to get rid of all the duplicates now the duplicate is in merged column but only when you look at in conjunction with invoice so within invoice if the product or item is duplicated then we want to remove so we just select both columns and then right click remove duplicates this will remove duplicate combinations in both columns in fact since these two columns are the entire table it will remove duplicate rows from the table so that's uh, that and we will uh, we will now have invoice one invoice two invoice three items so at this point what we want is we want to take all invoice one items so that is these items up to here and we want to just generate one big text that is a concatenation of these five six values so g c j k b d that's what we want to generate so to do that unfortunately there is no direct way of doing so what we will do is we will group by on invoice item so we'll group by on column one and rather than counting how many items are there we will simply say show me all the data and we will call this as data so we will get for each invoice a tiny table that shows us what are the columns available now we don't need both columns we just need the merged column so we will just go and add a column here uh, sorry not like that a custom column and uh, this is um, just items and uh, this would be data column merged column so it, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive but because within data itself there is a table what we are asking is in the net in the new column just get me the merged column of the table inside here um, and it will give you a list so this is how those list items can be extracted we don't even care for this list what we really want is take all these items and generate one text value that is comma separated with the items in that list so we will edit the formula rather than saying like this we will use a function called text.join um, think uh, it is uh, text dot combine um, and uh, and then data merged and separator would be comma with a space so if you notice what we are saying is 
combine all the items in this particular list with a comma separator that's what we are saying and uh, you will get that item so once that is done we can just remove our data table uh, and then rename this as invoice and uh, my data pq is the name of this query and we can just close and load and that will come and sit here uh, this is actually through power query so that means if there is any changes in the data you need to refresh for example if you go here and make some changes by adding an item here like uh, f you know you would need to come back here and refresh this and that will so show that extra item as well so that's how uh, the power query approach works now what is the advantage of formula versus power query if you ask me uh, if you have access to the formulas uh, like unique then just use them because that saves you a lot of time and you can just get the answers without having to think about all the necessary steps but um, if you are getting this data from a third party system and you first copy it in excel and then you are writing the formula then you are better off just uh, pushing it through power query and building that as a refreshable query that way you don't really need to worry about any of the formula writing you don't have to keep a copy of the data it is linked to the source data and you can always update it uh, my um, only concern with the power query approach is uh, that uh, the, the this approach is not straightforward um, not many people really get it in the first cut because when we are grouping we are grouping all rows and then we are adding a custom column that fetches one of the columns of the group table uh, and then does an operation on top of that so this is something that is of a um, uh, a, a mental leap for people who are learning power query to go from that stage to here but once you get there you can also achieve many other powerful transformations with your data so that's all for now i hope uh, you found this particular video interesting uh, deduplicate and concatenate uh, once again thanks for the youtube commenter who asked me a question along these lines which prompted me to create this particular video thanks for watching i'll talk to you again in the next one Bye bye